Welcome back to the boathouse, where Joe brought some of his family members by to see Arabella and also to drop off a significant piece of cherry that will become the handrails inside the boat. Yeah. Where do you think the black streaks are from? I don't know. Nails in a tree. Ooh! Iron. Bet you had a lot of trouble with resharpening things. Yeah, we found bits of barbed wire, nails, screws are the worst. Yeah. Screws are hard. Screws Bullets are, hard. are easy. Because yeah. <laughs> they're, they're lead and they're copper and they don't really bother the tools. You're just working along and you're like, ooh, shiny spot. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't bother the wood. I, I know for a fact there's a couple bullets in the boat. Um, yeah. The skills you've developed are a long ways from the ones you had when you started. That is true. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah, and that is... Uh, you can't come here without learning something. That's the fun. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Part of the reason I come. And we'll go around and go down the side of the road. Thanks for watching, liking, and subscribing. And always a big thanks to those supporting the project with their contributions on Patreon. Help keep us going by checking the description below and become a monthly supporter. Joe had a big part to play for this one. Wow! Holy mackerel! That's a 19 or 1890s 27 inch planer. 1890? Yeah. <laughs> and it works great. We got a, what was it, about 47? It's a, yeah, 1947 industrial flathead Chrysler. <laughs> so let me sh make sure I got this right. This is Roland. Yes. Ron, Roland. Roland, and you are Joe's older yeah. brother. Yes, he's both Ernie and my older brother. And he this is his son. Celebrated his 93rd birthday last nice. week. Congratulations. Aging in place. Yeah. And the uh, oldest, oldest son in his clan. You be careful, Brute, not beating on me. <laughs> so, when did you cut this cherry? Oh. How long has this been kicking around? I can't tell you exactly. It's been down over 50 years. All right. Between 40 and 50 years. Well, Definitely way last century. <laughs> <laughs> so we got like what three inches here. It should air dry for a year per inch. So I think we're pretty pretty air dried. Yeah, it's been been inside in my barn. It was in his, yeah. in um, his uh, wife's father's barn. Okay. For years, and the time came to get it out of there, so it came out and it went in my barn, and has been standing vertically in my barn for. No, probably, probably 10 years. 10 years, more, yeah. more like 15 years. But we figured here it'll it's get used and we'll know where it is. I hope yeah. you get some value out of it. Oh, no, for sure. There's a, there's a really nice grab rail on this side, and there's probably another one here. And then I'll make use of, I mean, this yeah, is, cracked, but yeah, but this is a thick enough piece here that yeah. you plane it down and resaw it, and you actually have a usable chunk of cherry. You're at the point where you're thinking about designing the handrails. Yeah. That's, that's got to be pretty exciting that you've progressed that far. Yeah, everything's everything's coming together. And we're starting to really run into the issue where we can't finish this till we finish that, which needs to be finished before this, but after that. But this can only go to a certain <laughs> stage until this has got to... Uh, a, a lot of critical paths. Critical paths are all combining now, yeah, which yeah. means, yeah, we're getting close. Yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. I've... Um, been hemming and hawing about what to do for the grab rails because I have some cherry but not enough and the cherry would just be so beautiful and it's so nice to work with and there's a bunch of cherry trim and pieces scattered throughout the boat so the grab rails would really visually tie all that together mm -hmm. um, so this is this is huge I can't thank you enough we just I just appreciate seeing it go to some worthwhile use yeah we're gonna touch this on a daily basis. Yeah. <laughs> Boats can be rocking and rolling and I'm going to be hanging on to your cherry. <laughs> All right. You ready to see what's inside this thing? Yes. You've been waiting like 50 years. <laughs> I can't believe it's been that long. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, you got a better piece over here.
Some uglies there? Yeah, it's still a little rot in the center, but I don't think it's going to be too bad. You'd be rotten in the center too if you were this old. Yeah. Thanks. That's some. Gotta love the quarter sound. Yeah. Oh, the figure. That's yep. beautiful. As long as you got a little punky in the middle. That's not bad. No, this one, I mean, it's still. I got the check still down there and the punky in the middle, but there's still a bunch of good. You would. That side's even nicer. Yeah. You can get a reel out of that. Yeah. And then this one is glory. Yes. Holy smokes. That's gorgeous. Yep. One knot down there. Yeah, just one knot. Well, you got a knot down there and you got a knot down here. Yeah. Well. Eight foot long, six inches wide, three inches thick, quarter song clear cherry. Yeah. It cost, just, it. cost you some bucks. Yeah. It's basically aged. Yeah, aged 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what do you think? Does it look better or worse than you thought? At least as good as I thought. Yeah, that was beautiful. This cherry won't be waiting around too long for the next steps toward becoming grab mm. rails. But there's quite a few projects going on at once right now. Fortunately, Aiden is on the scene with more help on the way soon. Last week saw Aiden getting started on the install of the port lights. He's also been making progress on finishing the cockpit in the paint and varnish room. And the many parts of Arabella's systems are arriving too, and Steve brought one for the fuel system on board. I am pretty excited about what's in this box. So this is from Keenan Filters, which is local here. They're in Southwick, uh, which is just a couple towns over. And they do some really awesome fuel filter setups. So they do it for aviation industry and they also do it for sailboats. They started in aviation and then the owners got a sailboat and were real tired of all the fuel issues. So they designed a system for their own use, realized it was marketable, and went into production. So they reached out to us a while ago and asked if we had plans for a filter system and wanted to know we would like to put in one of theirs and my answer was yes All right. so we got a fuel manifold we got three tanks so three valves another manifold so going on here is twin filters that are in line. So fuel filter one, fuel filter two. 
and we can switch these between filter one and filter two on the fly. If the motor starts to sputter and act up and you think something's wrong with the fuel, you can just switch over to the motor still running. And then what's cool about this is you can open up and switch out the filter. And these filters drop in from the top. So there's not, you don't have to put a cup underneath it to catch it. And they have this drip cup to catch that. So that in itself is really handy. And you notice that there's a fuel pump here. And this does two things. One, it acts as a backup for the fuel pump on the motor. So if the motor dies, we can use this fuel pump to continue to send fuel to the motor, which is a great backup. But what's even more exciting than that is this fuel pump will let us move the fuel by using the manifolds from tank to tank. Yeah, so this will be nice. We'll be able to pick exactly what tank we're pulling fuel from, mm -hmm. what tank we're returning fuel to. Um, so we could pull from a full tank and return the extra diesel to an empty tank. We could return it to the same tank. We can polish the fuel by switching it through the filters, through the tanks. Uh, this will let us really move the fuel around and make sure that it stays clean. Diesel doesn't like to sit for a long time. So if we have diesel in one of the tanks and we haven't run it and we haven't used that diesel in a while, it would be worth firing the system up and just sending that diesel through the filter, getting it all circulated, pulling any water out of it, pulling any sediment, any growth out of it, yeah. and then sending it into a clean tank. It'll be really nice when we're places where we get suspect diesel. It'll be great to be able to put 20 gallons in one of the tanks and that be the dirty tank and then run it through the filters into the other tank. And even if we go through a couple filters in 20 gallons of fuel moving it over, it'll be totally worth it. The filters are cheap. Um, the headache of clogged fuel lines and injectors and things not running is, is a lot worse than that. So this will give us a lot of great options. So thank you, Keenan. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thanks. So max flow rate, 60 gallons per hour. Which is all your fuel. Which is all our fuel in one hour. <laughs> I yep. think you'll be okay. Yeah, we should be running about one gallon per hour. So, one sixtieth its capacity. <laughs> so now, we have to figure out a home for this. I have to say, it looks very well made. A few miles away, KP is still getting better and doing a little work for the project from home polishing up and retrofitting Victoria's beautiful old lights to work with LED bulbs. Before? After. Coming up nicely. I believe these lights from Victoria were nickel-plated originally. But as I clean them up, there's no way to maintain that nickel plating. But the metal underneath, the brass, looks nice and should hold up for another 100 years. Overhead lights are all polished. And it's time to go over final choices. If you have to go search for bulbs and sockets, it's overwhelming. The festoon bulbs are these little, these little guys. And obviously the appropriate socket. This is the wedge type bulb base. It is wedge shaped. Now we have diodes, but the diodes come in by pin. So you need adapters, scribbles, that's enough. There's also by pin and plugs into a, a socket that looks like that. The bayonet, this is very standard, but the S and the D are important because the S is the single contact, the D is the double contact. So while the double fits into the single, there won't be good connection and it won't light the bulb. 
So you need to make sure if you have a bayonet style, you go with the double bulb base if your sockets are double. Victoria, where these lights came from, has the double contact. So this is a BA-15D. This is very common on boats. And we're gonna stick with that. Getting the lights back to the boathouse, where no initial plan goes unpunished, Aiden and Steve made some tweaks to KP's plan before wiring up and installing them. One thing that wasn't ideal was when this sits in here, the LED touched the glass, and so there was this point of high, really intense light. It wasn't a total deal breaker, but it didn't look great. Um, and just as we were playing around, we figured out that the galley lights somehow fit perfectly into these lights that were pulled out of Victoria. So what we're going to do, since they pretty much pressure fit in there, uh, we're just going to throw a little tape to keep them in, uh, just in case. And I'm going to take these wires, wire in a switch, this little guy right here, and yeah pretty straightforward. So one thing we had to do with these lights, because they're not technically marine grade, we had to take off this steel backer plate. We can just keep this reflector plate on there and then underneath this reflector plate, is a diffuser. And it's actually just an LED strip light that goes around the edge here that shines into the diffuser. And we're keeping this reflector on there so that, you know, it reflects the light down and into the light. Another thing we had to do uh, with these, a few of them that have this hole, we're gonna be installing these switches. So those will come out of the side and they'll just be an easy switch. And two of them will be wired together on a switch, um, but the rest of them all have ports for the switch, except for this one. For the big overhead lights, uh, we did end up going with the system that KP found, and we just put some Thixo epoxy here. They didn't come out perfectly straight, but you're not gonna notice when everything is put together. So we're gonna get these wired up also. nice and bright. We just got our dimmer switches in, which are these little guys right here. And I'm gonna continue wiring these big wires up. Um, are these big lights up for our overheads and then we're going to get those installed uh, and after we do these big ones we're going to move over to the little ones which are more 
four in the boat. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. We're gonna mount this little bus bar up onto the ceiling. Like that. The old third hand, the little double-sided tape. And we'll put a locust box around this so you won't see it. This is fiberglass insulated wire that we're using for all our permanent runs. And this will go right to our bus bar. Ah, nice. So I'm gonna hit all our electronic connections on the switches with some electronic coat. And this will just help prevent corrosion and if there's any condensation in these dome lights. This should prevent anything bad from happening. Just a little insurance. Wonderful. Now we'll just clean this up in a little bit. Get all these nice and into a box. But I'm happy with that. Nice. This hog does a great job of <laughs> making rough things flat. <laughs> Just to think of how you save that. What, was it being used when, when you found it? No, so Gannon and Benjamin used it, and then they got given a newer and bigger planer. <laughs> so this one went outside and was sitting under a tarp and starting to get rusty when we got it. In the motor, that definitely was saved. That hadn't been run in like 10 or 15 years. Big points to you for your skills to help them get it done. Yeah, I would not have gotten them joined up yeah. if it weren't for Joe. This, this was fun. Nice challenge for you, Joe, to figure out how to make it. Yeah. And now it's on this big angle iron base. So you can move the whole thing as one unit, dust collector, motor, and all. <laughs> Just drag it to where you need it. Yeah, yeah, drag it up onto a trailer and away you go. That will be something. Yeah. yeah. I'll bet you weighs a something too. My guess is around 6,000 pounds for the planer. Well, you can't go in there and don't take the other. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. My grandpa would move it himself, but he wouldn't want to show anybody up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we're going to hit the road. All right. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Uh, what's your week look like? Uh, pretty much open. 